Welcome to a Total War Saga Troy. In this video, I'm gonna take you on a whistle stop tour of the brand new photo mode. I've had a lot of fun playing around with this and I'm sure you guys will too. So without further ado, let's jump in and take a look at what this brand new feature has to offer. To start with, you need something that you want to take a picture of. Here, I'm on the Athens battle map with Athens in the foreground and a nice vista of mountains in the background. This looks great as it is, but we can make it better. To get into photo mode, let's hop into the main menu and into photo mode. This will open up a custom UI with lots and lots of options to help you customize and make your screenshots something special. To start with, I'm gonna jump down to the bottom here to environments. Under this drop down, there are several options and each one of these does something really cool. Clicking on them, changes the skybox which is incredible you get everything from noons to dusk to dawns even nighttime if you want and then unending rain for those incredibly moody battle shots everyone's going to want to get now for this one i'm going to choose blood drenched sunset now at the top sky rotation allows me to choose the rotation of the sun and where it's pointing now for this, I want the sun just peeking over those mountains. I think just there looks really good. Sky intensity does what it says on the tin, increases or decreases the sky. I want to boost this up just a little bit to bring the shadows up in the foreground. I reckon there looks good. God rays, you need to be careful with. As you can see, you could really blow out your sky. God rays are really good if you're behind something like trees, like mountains, like buildings, but as the sun is just on, on the horizon, I'm just gonna drop this down maybe to, maybe to around 60, 50%, there's good. Glow intensity again. I'm just gonna boost that because that gives a kind of a nice little fringing on these mountains here, which looks really nice. Fog density, you can see in the mountains, you bring up and take it away. Now I quite like a little bit of fog in the background, it just makes it a little bit more realistic, so I'm going to bring it up just, I reckon about there. Now heroes and units you can turn on and off, but as we don't have any heroes or units in the shop, we can just leave them on, it'll be fine. So let's go to our next tab, camera. In here you'll find everything to do with camera settings. So let's start off with focus distance and f-stop. So I want just these buildings here to be in focus and a nice fall off in the background and the foreground. To do that, I'm going to decrease the f-stop, which decreases the amount of the picture that will be in focus. Then I'm going to increase the focus distance to focus on the buildings that I want to be in focus. So basically, the lower the f-stop, the less that's in focus, and the higher the f-stop, the more's in focus. Yeah, I reckon there is about right. Field of view will allow you to punch in or zoom out. It will help you get some shots that you may not be able to get to with the normal camera. Exposure, I'm going to drop this down just a touch, just to give it a bit more contrast. Lens flare, as you can see, creates these nice little lens flares on the screen. So I don't want too much, maybe about there, as you can see it just kind of starts to halo here, which looks really nice, and I'm going to spread, spread it out just a little bit there. Yeah, that looks good. So next, I'm going to go over to filters. In here, there's a drop down box, and there's lots and lots of filters to choose from. I'll just randomly pick a few so you can kind of see what kind of stuff there is. For this one though, I'm going to go classic teal and orange because I think it looks really good with the trees, with the sunset, with the mountains, it just fits really well. I'm going to leave the intensity on 100 but obviously you can dial it in. If you went for something like documentary, it's quite an in intense filter so you can kind of dial it back to where you think fits really nicely with your scene. But with teal and orange, I think it looks really nice at 100%. Film grain, I'm going to bring up because I just kind of want that nice little maybe a bit too much maybe back down to 
maybe around 16, 17% looks good. Saturation, I'm going to boost just a little bit just to bring out those oranges in the tree. But obviously if you take it all the way down, you get a black and white. But I'm just going to boost up not that much. Maybe 118 looks good. And contrast wise, maybe just drop that down just a touch. Yeah, I think that looks really good. And the last tab is frames. Here you can add a vignette and let's be honest, what picture doesn't look good with a vignette? So let's whack this up, maybe a bit too much, maybe back down to 140%. And the fall off, let's bring down just a little bit so it's just kissing the edges. I think there looks, oh, maybe a bit more. Maybe about 90 looks good. Here you have your aspect ratio and you have everything here from your Instagram square, from your vertical, but I'm going to keep with 16 by 9 Through all of these, you can still move your screenshot around if you don't like it. So if you want the uh, 16 by 9 just to get that sunset, just move it over a little bit. But I'm going to keep with 16 by 9 and go back to my original position. Frame-wise, to add a little bit more personality, we have a few frames here from parchment, darkness, bronze, copper. I'm going to choose light. You also have a logo that you can put on if you want to. Again, you have dark, bronze, and light. So to go with the frame, I'm going to go light as well. And I'm going to keep the position of that in the top right corner. Once you're finished and you're happy with the screenshot, just push space. And that takes the picture. And that's it. That's simple. Here's before and after. You can see how much creative power this tool gives you and we would love to be able to see what you create when this feature goes live later this week.